What's up? So in my last video about React India, uh, a great commenter, subscriber, Shivam, uh, mentioned he was struggling to understand React Fiber. By the way, if you want to watch that React India video, I'll put a link up there. Um, but Shivam mentioned, you know, hey, I'm trying to understand React Fiber. And I was like, bro, um, you're a subscriber. I care about you. I care about this channel. I'll just make a video uh, that breaks it down. And out of that comes this video and probably the next one. What, what we'll do is a two-part series on Fiber. Uh, this one more like theoretical with diagrams, um, why the stack reconciler didn't work, what reconciliation even is. Um, and then the next one, practical, like we'll actually look at the React DOM source code and, and step through the functions. Um, if that's interesting for you, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss it. Okay. And with that, let's just begin. Let's talk about reconciliation in React. What, what is that? Um, what does reconciliation mean? I think reconciliation is probably the biggest part of React, like the biggest value proposition of React. What reconciliation is, um, is reconciling your description of what you want your user interface to look like and behave like with some host environment. In the case of React Web, a browser, in the case of React Native, a mobile device, and in the case of uh, React Inc, like some type of terminal. Um, but this is what reconciliation is. Like you write your JSX files, you describe, okay, I want this this nested main side nav, you know, user profile, whatever. Like you define your tree of elements and React will take your description in JSX and reconcile it with a host environment. That reconciliation just means put this stuff on the screen this way and behave to events like this. Um, that's what reconciliation is. Or well, before React 16, we had what is called the stack reconciler, a stack based reconciler. It's where it used a stack data structure for reconciliation. Um, and then after React 16, you had the, or rather after React 15 from React 16, you had the Fiber Reconciler. So in this video, we'll talk about what the Stack Reconciler is, why it didn't quite work, what Fiber is and how it works, okay? With that, let's get into it uh, with some diagrams. I'm gonna be using TL Draw for diagrams and we're gonna be drawing a stack. There you go, that's a stack. Uh, this is a stack. A stack is a last in first out or LIFO data structure. And what that means is if you have like work to be done on the stack, um, you know, you you just you just stack it up just like this, um, and the thing that's the last in is the thing that's the first out. The last in is the first out. That's LIFO. Um, things are popped off the stack or pushed on to the stack. Pop, push, and that's how you have it. The problem with the stack-based data structure is that it is sequential, um, and and hard to do like parallel or concurrent stuff with, um, which is a problem for UI or user interface engineering because user if input events have an inherent like sense of priority. What I mean by that is if you have like a text input field, like an email address field, like if they start typing, you need to respond to that keystroke immediately. Can you imagine if someone types like K and then like it comes like a second later in the screen, that's gonna be nasty. Uh, that's a high priority update. Meanwhile, like if you receive some notification from somewhere that you're not even expecting, if that shows up like a second later on the screen, nobody cares unless it's like stock market stuff. But mostly that's a lower priority update, right? So this priority is inherent with UI um, user interfaces. And so the stack data structure wouldn't be nice because if you have like high prior work here and you know some low prior work here, um, it would have to do this, this, uh, this and this before it can come here. And if the low prior work is just some animation or something that takes time, your user experience is pretty much screwed. Um, that's quite why the stack reconciler didn't work. And also the stack reconciler did everything like in real time, like it made updates just on the screen. Um, it would have been nicer if one, the stack reconciler was interruptible and had a sense of priority. And two, if it kind of did work off screen and only put stuff on screen when it was ready. Um, along this line of thinking came the fiber reconciler, which is both those things. It has a sense of priority and it's able to bail out halfway through some update, do a higher priority update off screen and then put that on screen. Um, to understand this, let's actually draw a diagram that kind of represents the fiber reconciler. To do that, we'll just create like a tree of elements. We have a div, the div has a, the div has a child that's like, a, let's say a h1, h1 has a sibling span, the span has a sibling button. 
let's give these a lot more space to breathe. I think that'll be essential for what we're trying to do. Um, and we'll add, what is the shortcut for things? T, nice. We'll add hello world as a child to h1. Again, more space. We'll add um, count. Well, let's build a counter. So count, that's one child. And then like the interpolated value, that's the second child. And then we'll add like a child to the bottom that's plus. This is a counter that can only go up. I wish that's my salary or my income from YouTube. Anyway, uh, jokes aside. So this is a tree of elements and let's co connect them. So it's a child of that. That's a child of that. Siblings, right? Children, two of them this time. Um, look at that, beautiful. Sibling again, child. So now we've got this tree. Okay, and you can say this is a tree of fiber nodes. Okay, let's call this tree, let's put it in a big box and call this the, um, let's call this the current tree, current. Okay, um, and let's just as a description, let's say always in the browser. Okay, or rather in the browser right now. Okay. There you go. So that is representative of a tree of fiber nodes. Okay. What's so cool about this? Well, fiber does work like you work required to update the user interface in two phases. One is the render phase and one is the commit phase. It makes updates in the render phase and it does this off the screen in memory. And then when the rendered work looks good, it commits it in the commit phase to the screen, puts it on the browser to do this two phase approach. Uh, fiber needs to maintain two trees, a current tree like we have here, and really a copy of the current tree called the alternate or um, you just saw my notification, whatever, um, the alternate tree or work in progress tree, let's call it like this alternate or work in progress. Um, great. And this is not in the browser, this is detached from the browser. Okay, so it maintains these two trees to render and commit. Then it does the rendering work off the screen in the work in progress tree. And when it looks good, commits it. I want to talk to you about how exactly it does that. Let's imagine a user interface update. Okay, let's imagine somebody comes here and clicks this. Okay, so in our initial state, so to speak, count is zero. And then in the next, how, do, how does it get to this? Um, it works with functions calling other functions in both the render phase and the commit phase. Let's model that. So to kick off the render phase, um, there's what is called a work loop. So work loop. And this is kind of like a game engine. As long as there's work to do, do it in a loop. Okay. Um, the work loop is literally that. Like the code looks like why will work to be done true? Do work. Okay. What is work? Work starts with a function called begin work. So let's write that down. Uh, we'll say begin work. Begin work um, takes as arguments the current fiber node, the work in progress fiber node, and render lanes. Render lanes are important for scheduling, but that's out of scope for this video. We maybe do another video about that, but I want you to pay attention to the current fiber node and the work in progress fiber node. A current fiber node is something that's in the browser right now. We do not mutate this, we just read from it to compare what is on the screen with what's about to be on the screen. What's about to be on the screen is the work in progress. So these two are important. This we never change, this we change, um, and, and go from there. So when there's work to be done, like you click this, right? There is now officially work to be done. So we call begin work. Where do we call it? What do we pass in for arguments? We pass in the top level. This is like the app component, right? This is like kind of like your, um, this thing, okay? So we pass in this, and we do work on that. Um, and we pass in this as the second argument. And what we do is we do work on them. What work happens in begin work? It marks update flags. It literally, it'll like compare next props and previous props. Did anything change? Yes. Then it sets a flag. Stuff changed. It sets a bunch of flags that mark this component as needs to update. That's what it does. When it's finished, it recursively calls begin work on the next thing, it steps down in the tree. So you begin work on the top, it, it sets a bunch of flags, then calls begin work on div, passing in these two. So the current node and the work in progress. Okay, cool, any updates here? Okay, good, walk down one more. Okay, this now we're in H1. 
Great, any updates? Mark flags, begin work on the child. Now, when we reach the bottom, we can't really go any deeper because we're at the bottom. Um, it sets a bunch of flags and then, you know, it will either go to the siblings, um, but it will, before going to the siblings, we'll call a function called complete work because, you know, the begin work needs to complete work. So we'll model that here. It actually takes the same, it has the same signature. So it takes the same arguments and it calls complete work. So we get to the bottom, we call complete work. What does complete work do? We already know begin work sets a bunch of flags and walks down. Complete work um, constructs an HTML, like an, a tree of elements, an HTML element tree, not in the browser what you can see, but in memory. Um, so it constructs this tree, attaches nodes, and then moves either up or to the side and basically walks back up. So begin work walks down setting flags, complete work walks back up, um, com composing a work in progress like element tree. How can you create a tree of HTML elements not detached to the browser? I'll show you. So if we open the console here, console, I can do something like const div, uh, create element div, const, const span, cons, const span is create element span. And then I can like div dot append child span. And I can like, you know, console log the div and I have, look, I have a tree. This is nowhere in the browser. It's just in memory. Um, if I want to put it in the browser, I would do document dot append child div. And now it's part of the document, right? I won't do that because it'll mess up TL draw, but that's, that's the commit phase. Document dot append child is kind of, you can think of it as a commit and all of the work before that is just complete work. So it constructs this tree attaching things and it gets to the top. When it gets to the top, the render phase is finished and we shift to the commit phase. What does the commit phase do? Well, when we're finished with complete work, then the alternate tree is the latest and best state. So we need to commit this tree to the browser, to the host environment. To do that, uh, we need to look at the fiber root node. The fiber root node is a hidden real root of your fiber tree. The, the root is not this, the root is this. And when your app starts, like before any updates are made, it has a pointer. It points to the current tree like this. But then after complete work finishes on the work in progress tree, the commit phase will basically take this pointer and point here. And then count one, the latest state is in the browser and the work loop is done. This happens every time there's work to be done. Um, the cool thing about this is because a lot of this work rendering happens off the screen. If a high priority update comes in to interrupt that, it can't because you haven't seen anything change. So it can just bin low priority work. It can get rid of it, bail out do the high priority work, commit it, and then go back to the low priority work. It's, it's interruptible because um, it's not a stack and it's also not on the screen. There's like a draft UI that it's always working with in the background. That at a high level is how the fiber reconciler works, why the stack reconciler didn't, and what reconciliation even is. Um, I hope that's helpful. If it is, let me know in the comments, um, or even if it's not, let me know in the comments so we can improve. Um, what did you think? Is this, this is good? Uh, also, at me on Twitter. Next time, we're going to be looking at this exact thing, but like practically, like we'll look at the source code of React DOM and we'll follow the call stack um, of these functions as updates happen in a, in a UI. Uh, so if you want to catch that, subscribe, hit the bell. But for now, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.